it's also be recording uh, recorded here so it's gonna be a long video to review though so if you guys are on here make sure to tap your screen uh what's going on fly cricket um yeah make sure to tap your guys' screen again i am live on twitch if you guys want to go there uh but otherwise you guys let me know what you want to look at um there's no formal way to start this uh it's just stocks so uh, we are prepping for the week ahead uh short week ahead uh so this is a great place to start doing that so if you guys have those requests go ahead and drop those in the chart uh and i will start categorically and make my way down one at a time, guys, because if, if I do see your request and I see one ticker, I'm going to pick the ticker. So you got to pick the ticker, and then when I'm done with it, then drop another request, because there's no way I'm going to remember the five tickers that you want me to charge. So, uh, All right, so the first one, and I am writing every single one of these down, is CVX. That's the first one that I saw there. So what we're going to be doing on this uh, whole thing here is we're going to be basically charting as needed, right? So we're going to be using the same exact strategy, same exact thought process that we would use any other day. Uh, why do I have a weird... Yeah. That made it worse. A little bit better. All right, uh, so let's go to the daily here, CVX. So I'm gonna be walking you guys through. If you guys have questions, please ask questions. Uh, if you guys are trying to learn how to chart, right? And you wanna know why I did something in particular, ask questions. If you don't ask questions, you won't know. And if you don't know, you can't do so. All right, so the first thing that I like to do, of course, is focus on where you're at. I'm turning that off. Uh, I'll upload it on YouTube, but it, we're not streaming to YouTube right now, no. We are strictly on Twitch and TikTok. Yeah. So, uh, let's talk about, let's talk about CVS. So, number one, right, is there is basically spanning from here. Hmm. First chart of the morning here, looking pretty fresh. So I'm gonna drop this down and we're gonna do a little bit of exploring. Again, we talked about how we're gonna basically work these charts over, right? We're gonna make sure that we've got our charts on point. So one of the first things that I see, and this is where you have to get into a debate with the chart, debate with the chart, excuse me, is we wanna identify where do buyers, where are buyers, where are sellers, where do they try to control the price? Obviously, right here, we see one, two, three, four rejections, and then a break to the upside. So that's pretty good. We also see that once you break below that box, right, you make a significant new low. Um, and then once recovered and cost basis is broken, you guys know the deal. That's a punch back. That's an automatic new high. Uh, so let's go ahead and move into where we're at currently. So right here, I've got cost basis around 158. I'm gonna assume that this is gonna be ranging from 160 uh, to that mark of 158. That is, that is basically where I would safely assume that if you can break up above that 160 mark, you should be looking at a CVS back up around, and this fucking light is not going to work in my face. Uh, you should be looking at about 164 or 165. Uh, that would be my first instinct there. Then I do like trend, right? Because we are trend traders. Okay, so not too shabby there. Being the... Being uh, that you are at cost basis, right? You are underneath an area of supply, uh, excuse me, an area of resistance. I think this one's pretty simple. Um, so right here, and it's kind of tough to see. Right there, you'll notice that this stock holds itself up something fierce. So this is actually, actually the bottom of this box. So this is your area of consolidation. This just happens to be a support and the psychological number of 150. You're not gonna butter through that at all. Uh, so the first thing first, we break down, we do break cost basis, we do go make a new low. We have then recovered and we are up against cost basis. So my simple diagnosis here is get above cost basis and you should find yourself at 164 with a broken downtrend. Reject cost basis and you should find yourself back down at 150 for your third approach there so uh but it does look like it's stalling it's not moving which is good if you're looking for a trade 
to either direction. So uh, I say if I was to lean in any direction, right, I would say right now, actually, I wouldn't say because that's not how I trade. I just simply react to these marks. Uh, all right. So the next one, if you guys have it, um, one hour time frame. Are you talking about on CVS? Uh, this that was the daily. That was the daily time frame. Okay, uh, so let, you, is is that what you were talking about? The CVS? I didn't see which one you were talking about. Yeah, all right, so let's go ahead. If you guys have more requests, go ahead and drop those now. I'm not going to be able to keep a uh, perfect track of every single uh, request, so I'm just going to basically look at what I got. You guys are the first priority, so you guys could just sit here and request charts over and over again. Uh, you did ask me about Generac. We have charted this one before. I remember telling you that you needed to break, I believe, above this mark. You have done so. And since... Oh my god, what a fucking terrible chart, man. Like, awful. Okay, so you'll notice that when you bounce, one of the first areas that you reject is this 124, 125 mark. You also notice here, right, this seems to be the arms of the head and shoulders, but also just a major resistance uh, in and of itself. It's 124.75. I think it's really, really simple. Right now, you must, uh, and we'll be a little bit more, uh, yeah, conservative here. Uh, anything uh, bankrupt right now, huge financial issues, only storm season can save them. Um, ow. Uh that's funny you say that. Uh, so, actually, uh, below 115, I would be bearish on them. Uh, and then from that mark, you'll have a cost basis right around here. And this is definitely where buyers and sellers decide whether they like the price. That is 105. So, uh, right now, the way that I see it, if I mean, I don't, I'm not even looking at the bank issues or whatever it might be. Uh, but just looking at the chart, you don't have a lot of conviction. You don't have really much of anything. Um, and so you're stuck between a rock and a hard place. Uh, your next resistance above you on Generac is right here at 129, basically 180. So, all right. Uh, IBM. Yeah, if you guys can, make sure to uh, tap your screens. Uh, this is a attempt to get back on the algorithm. Uh, if I promise to not be bad. What? Uh, I'm lowering my desk. I'm low. I'm I'm moving with it. You guys can't tell. Oh. I've been standing all day. Which isn't that long, but I'm old. Uh, huge flow on IWM. Okay, so uh, I do want to step out to the weekly on this. Oh my god, no I don't. No, I don't. What the fuck is even that? Alright, so you got... You know what? It is, it is important that you know where you're at right here. So this mark, I want you to pay attention to this because this is really where... IBM gets the dog shit slapped out of it. Uh, so check this out. Basically 142. We're going to call it 142. Gap down underneath it, flush, right? And that obviously earnings. You lose it, you flush, right? You go across here. You'll notice that if we were to drag this across. Motherfucker. Right here, right? Open underneath. Dump, you have to build underneath, bounce, 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 so on and so forth. So right now we can just go ahead and say that 142 is going to be a major resistance for us, period, uh, period. So let's go ahead and move over to the daily like we were. And this is where we should be able to find something, at least in the most recent sessions, that should help us out. Okay, so number one is right here. Okay. 
he, uh, I don't know why that keeps updating. Yeah, make sure you guys are tapping your screen today. I appreciate that a whole lot. Okay, so number one, you have broken out. You actually did get a punch back. This is a certified punch back right here with a cost basis right around that 135 psychological mark. Absolutely wild how that always works out. Now, this area of consolidation is your next hurdle. And I think you already are seeing that. Let's see. Where did, oh, okay, cool. So it's showing me that it is actually... There's like a black line right there. Where did that come from? What is that? Is that in my eyes? Take two seconds to check your Discord view. I figured out why you're getting banned. Uh, but what if I am? My doctor said I was. Is that fine? They don't know that. <laughs> I got you. That might be, you might be right. All right. Uh, so here's what I see for this. Oh yeah. You don't get good at this shit unless there's something, something, some screws are loose. I'm telling you, bro, you can't be a normie. It's impossible. 141.30. Okay. So here's what I can tell you on this one. IBM cannot lose or move down, and I'm going to be really conservative on this one, 136.64. 136.64 for IWM is probably going to be the place to watch uh, if you're going to continue to move to the downside. And, of course, 135 even. You do not want to lose that, that floor. Next, the next leg up or the next area that you're going to be fighting is 141.30. If that's broken, then I would be looking for this very, very small gap to fill at 145. I, IWM looks good if you're targeting that gap and only that. I would only target that gap. I don't think I see anything else there. So, all right. So, so far we got IWM, Baba, Target, Amazon. Sorry, I'm looking at uh, Twitch here too. So, yeah, we are on Twitch as well. So, if you guys want to check that out, um, be sure to check that out uh, in the bio. WBD. WBD, Warner Brothers Discovery. Yeah, yeah, we'll look at it. Hmm, okay. Wait, I did do, I, I, I don't think I charted that, did I? Yeah, I, I did IW, IBM. Yeah, yeah, I, IBM. Yeah, I, I did that one. See, Say, same box. I might be mixing up the words, but yeah, WBD. Sorry. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Okay, cool. Gotcha. Uh, so here's what I see. 
uh, with uh, WBD, w, yeah, WBD. So you've got a beautiful cost basis right around 1315. You've got a support at 1236. From what I typically see on any setup like this, you have punched back. You can hold. Uh, <sighs> it's any sort of recovery actually lies above uh, 1315. So what I'd be looking for uh, on IW or I, BWD, whatever fuck, uh, is I would actually be looking for a new low. I'd be looking for a new low, probably targeting either A right here at 1236 or B here at uh, 1212. Um, yeah, I have a terrible habit of like not caring about that. Like, yeah, my, my bad guys, <laughs> as long as you guys know what I'm saying, that's, that's all that matters to me. So, uh, now I need to put W B D on the list. Now here's what I see for this one. Just looking forward. I think that you make a very small new low and you bounce now you, this could be a sign of a reversal, but the same thing goes to the upside. If you lose 1260 at all and then reclaim it and break 1312 again, you should continue moving back up to the upside. Also, something that I really like, right? And I'll show you guys this now. At the end of any downtrend, which we'll see if that's even applicable. Yeah, and I truly, really don't like that. I don't like that at all. But that could be true. That could be true. Just because we don't like it doesn't mean it's not true. So from what I can tell, right, you rejected your trend. So, um, yeah, uh, basically 1260, you got to hold that or this is a certified rejection and you're more than likely going to go and make a new low maybe somewhere around eleven dollars or you bounce here and consolidate and make your way back up using this small box right here because this is all you need anytime you have a structured box on top of a uh, higher time frame area that is honestly one of the best setups that you can find because you can use that lower time frame box as an actual or, or that smaller area of consolidation as your entry because the mechanism still works what the fuck just happened oh, I just turned my my computer off Something about to come unplugged or something? Don't know. Don't know. Chartathon. Chatathon. Yeah, right? We've only been going for 18 minutes. I'm done. No, just kidding. <laughs> good morning. Good morning. I hope everybody's got their coffee. Cheers. You look like the guy from Tekken that kicks. I don't know if they're gonna argue with that. It kind of looks like Kid Rock. Is that, is that it? Red hair guy. I think you may have us horribly mistaken. Here, let me. Nah. Not if it's that guy. Some of that guy? Okay. I can see it. This guy? I can see it. All right, we're done. Anyway. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> we got plenty of time for that shit. <laughs> A different stage of flutter. <laughs> Listen, I appreciate it. 
Mm. I better say good morning to Betty White, patron saint. We're going to light that up here later. Yes, sir, ADHD. That's why I'm here. I would. I don't think I'd be successful if I didn't. Uh, anyway, so this small box here on WBD, uh, right? You can use that. You've got resistance. You've got support. So if you were to reclaim and break $14, I'm 100% sure that you would continue moving to the upside. Horror... How... What? Are you talking about the guy on Tekken? No, I haven't gone through AMD. I'm happy to go through whatever request you guys have. I mean, that's kind of cool, and I'll definitely take that. I'll definitely take that. All right, so we've got WDB. What is next? Uh, I think let's do AMD. I said that we're gonna take a look at that one next. So let's go ahead and look. Now I already have analysis for this one on the daily, uh, and here's what I said the last time we talked um, about AMD. I talked about the fact that you were probably uh, getting close to a potential punch back or punching back, uh, and one of the things that we didn't want to do is we didn't want to lose or open up below 124.85, and that's exactly what happened. And of course, it went straight to my price target. You guys know that we're sick with these levels right now, uh, and that was 119.50, and that was really the last place that we could really bounce before seeing a actual pullback. Because right here, slightly above that is 120, and if that is broken, we are looking for a new low. So at the moment, I am watching for AMD to potentially either A, bounce off of that 117, which seems unlikely, or bounce off of 112. This is Trend Spider. Looking, uh, looking 118.15 back up to 128. So, so the way that I have AMD, just to give you a synopsis, you're stuck into basically the top area of this box and in between you tapped off of 134 which was this all-time high consolidation and it made total sense that you rejected but then the follow the follow through right would be to break down into the box below 113 where then you would probably move all the way down to uh yeah jammy channels what are you talking about are you talking about pajamas <laughs> uh, anyway, so yeah, I, I personally, when I look at this chart, I say bounce off of 112, uh, but anything below that, and you're probably dealing with a mess. So yeah, happy happy Juneteenth to all of those uh, able to take the day off, and uh, if you guys have vacation, enjoy it. Um, for us, we're charting the fucking markets. Um, gold, dude, for some reason, I can't, I can't, I can't chart gold on this. It won't let me. It won't let me. All right, let's keep moving, guys. So we got AMD now. Um, if you guys have requests to, like, have me take a look at a lower time frame, this is, of course, where I can actually set up charts for, like, intraday trading, just like this. Obviously, we see AMD's got that 122.40, and, uh, oh, would you look at that? Do you know where you closed? You closed on cost basis. I don't even have to touch these charts. Oh, you want me to do Barrick? I can do Barrick or GLD. Yeah, no problem. I just meant like ES and stuff like that. So, um, but yeah, so for AMD, right? Underneath this 119, you need to bounce. Honestly, you really do need to bounce because this could be a setup for AMD to get the fuck, uh, get back out. Right, you want to get back out, and honestly, AMD. I have a feeling I'm gonna get a ban today. I don't know why. I just had like a, like a my life flash before my eyes, but it was a digital life, and I die. Um, yeah. So 100% use this structure that you're looking at right here on AMD, especially this 125.19. Use that. There's a ton of short stacked up against that area, so. Uh, all right, so let's take a look at GLD. Guys, we have all day. If you guys don't mind just tapping the shit out of your screen, that would be amazing. Uh, but we have all day. So I will be taking a couple intermissions, uh, obviously, to, you know, take care of the body I was given and not die, uh, as well as maybe say hello to my family once or twice. 
Um, but uh, we are going to be going all day, so. Also, anybody, uh, any dads out there, happy uh, Father's Day. If you guys, hope, hope you guys had a good day. Unless you're a shit dad. And I hope yesterday was gruesome, awful. Maybe a little bit of suffering in there for you. All right, so let's see here. Gold. Muy bueno. Okay. 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 Yes, I can do that. I can rock with that because guess what? I mean, it's kind of ugly, but I can rock with it. So we're, we're basically saying 181, 64. Good morning. What's going on, guys? Good morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is the daily. I'm starting on the daily, Jinjo. Good morning. Uh, so anyway, here's what I see here. Um, honestly, I don't see an opportunity to go short quite yet. Uh, but that could happen very, very quickly. And I think that if you were to take that short, you could simply look at this structure right here. Anything below 180.22, but then again, you still have 178.85. So that would ultimately have to be held. The way that you're moving down doesn't really show strength to the downside, if at all. But what I do know, and with gold, guys, we can't just use a simple Potter box. We actually have to use the combination of the Potter box and the Darvis box together, right? Today is a day off. We're just we're just charting. We're just uh, going over the uh, over the market prepping for tomorrow. So. I do I do love some charting, some good charting. All right. Uh, yeah, no, no. I actually saw some kids posting that they were going to be taking today off. Or they may, might look for some trades. I was like, damn, boy, talk about exposing yourself. Um, anyway, so yeah, guys, anything above 183.40 and especially 188.44, I'm going to give you guys a price target right now, right here. And I think it gets to 186.28. That's my price target from where you're at right now. If you make a move over that 183. Astronaut, I swear to God, you better be joking, right? You're joking, right? Is that a joke? You gotta be joking. Listen, if you, I, I hope you're joking. I hope this... Yeah, okay, that's not you. I fucked my brain up for a second. Listen, I'm gonna tell you this right now, bro. Quit. Stop doing this. Don't do it anymore. This is not where you want to be. Period. This is not where you're going to make money, dude. You do not have the right mindset. You are. You want someone to come and save you. You want someone to come and do the work for you. You got to go and do it yourself, my friend. Please tell me what stocks I should buy. If you guys ask me that, there's another stream for you. I wish you all the best, but I cannot help you. And that is the best way that I can tell you without being a total dick. Uh, but... Ask me, what do you look for when you are looking for stocks to buy? And I will answer that question so you can learn. But I'm not going to tell you what stocks to buy because that would make me a financial advisor and I ain't going to jail. What am I looking at this week? Uh, we might be taking a, a little bit of a foot off of the gas on uh, Tesla, but uh, we'll see. Uh, trippy Mike. Yeah, happy belated Father's Day to you as well, man. Thank you. Appreciate you. Uh, all right, so I see that. GameStop, very funny. Um, all right, so that's gold. Uh, I feel like I fucking skipped something. What did I skip? We had GLD, AMD, that was right. AMD. I'm trying to write down all the charts that I'm doing, and I might make a video in the middle of the day and be like, we charted this many. But I don't know. This is like Jat GPT. You got to use the right prompts to get the right answer. Facts. All right. Uh, coin. Yeah. Keep dropping your requests, guys. Uh, don't spam, but uh, I see you uh, 
uh, stop trans genocide. Uh, that is, uh, I, I saw you requested that a couple of times. Why aren't we trading today? Because the banks, my friend, the banks, they won't let you. They don't like, they, they're, it's a personal war on you, specifically. Oh, yeah, baby. You can't escape this shit. My eyes. My special eyes. Dude, I tell you what, man. That's a punchback right there. Beautifully executed. You do go make a new low. Why? Because we know that the Potter Box always gives us a new low right punch back up new high punch back down new low neo xpve uh yes just keep dropping this request man as soon as i get done i'm taking the first thing that i can see if you guys stop we're gonna go and move over to the s p and we're gonna start looking at the most random fucking stocks that you guys could possibly ever think of and we're going i will be highlighting stocks that fit my setup specifically that I would trade. So if you guys just hang out here today, this is also like a scanner. You could throw a, a fucking earbud in your ear and go about your day and just listen. Uh, I'll tell you guys what I end up finding. So I'm going to try to to not do repeats though, which is impossible. So Okay, uh, so coin, we have got to go down to, I think, a lower time frame now. Yes, sir. Precisely what the, yep. Oh man, I love stocks. That's obvious. That's an obvious setup right there for both. Both, both can be winners, both can be losers, and I, I'm keeping this trend here because it is real. There, there is, there is trend here for sure. Uh, and then we're gonna bring this down because you do have to be really perfect on that one. We're gonna bring this down, right there. Look at that shit. Mmm, disgusting. Okay, so here's what I got for you. Uh, and really, I. I think this is a pretty exciting chart because it sets up the probability of you taking this both to the up and the downside. So pretty, pretty cool. Uh, I like when triggers are close by in either direction. So here's what I see. Uh, you are stuck between two areas of consolidation, right? Area A is up here with a, of course, we've got a secondary level right there, but this is the floor that is... 55 56 dollars and you've got this area of consolidation this is 54.50 areas are, are uh that's either or right well i hate starting off analysis saying that like it could go both ways but we know that there are certain triggers lying on either side that we can just rely on those right just bring that down right there yeah so we have right the opportunity with this, we can look at where, and I'm going to highlight this. This is basically going to be your cost basis. This is $60. Above $60, I would be going and I would be looking for a run back up. On the flip side, it is real simple, guys. If you open below $52.60, you will go make a new low. Okay? $52.60. New low, I'm assuming that'll probably be around 47.73. And who knows, dude? I think coin yo, hold on. This week, watch for Coinbase. I don't know what news is gonna come out. Coinbase. I'm gonna write a price target down next to that one just for gambling sake. PT $36. Am I crazy? Maybe. Am I gonna trade it? Nope. So that was free. All right, uh, let's move on. What do we got next, y'all? Yeah, BlackRock holding ETF. Yeah, I don't I don't really care about that. 
They're gonna. You think they're gonna? They're gonna fucking let you guys have that price at fifty five dollars? What happens when big ex- institutions fucking grab hold of something? Meow. Right back up. So if they just did that ETF shit. I'm short for sure. I can't tell you how many things people get amped up on because they think if BlackRock or Warren Buffett gets involved, that it's gonna rip. And uh, you got to think about it. If you're an institution, you want that shit low. We don't chase. If Coinbase is going to go to the moon and, and Bitcoin's going along with it. Yep, yeah, for sure. That's right. All right, so what's next? What do we got next? We got, uh, and I'm just going off the cup. Man, you really want me to look at GameStop? All right, dude. I'm going to look at GameStop for you, but it's going to cost you. I don't know what's going to cost you. Something spiritual. I'm gonna need like a, like an animal sacrifice. I'm just kidding. I shot. That's how you get. <laughs> that's how you get banned. Uh, all right. So, I think I said this one yes uh, last week. You're basically oscillating between resistance and support. You've got that clearly marked with a wick, body candle range right here. You're sitting on top of cost basis, which is twenty four dollars. You need to hold this uh, in order to continue moving to the upside or have any sort of chance to squeeze sellers out whatever it is that they're trying to plan but i'm just going to tell you this right now this is an absolute shit show in terms of trying to find trend trying to find or do any sort of higher big brain analysis uh you're going to uh unfortunately feel all sorts of different types of ways the only time that i have gotten a channel is right here and you know what this channel tells me that you're probably going to fucking dump so um but anything above $29 and $30, you increase the chance of you potentially moving to the upside. I think that if you break $33, $33, then you might actually have a chance. All right. GameStop. I'm trying to remember to write all these down because I feel like uh, I'm going to forget one. That coffee is delicious. I can feel it surging through my eyeballs. Yeah, this coffee's a little too strong. Ah! Fucking. Uh, all right. What's next? Uh, what do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Trying to make sure I'm not like blatantly skipping over anybody. B S R R. Better not be B S and me. B S R R. Sierra Bancorp. Shh. Yes. All right. That's got no liquid. You're illiquid. I have not done Caravana. Hot dog water soup. You got it, dude. You got it. He said BSSR, not BSR. I, no, 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 no. No, no, no. Don't you gaslight me. I'm going to read that. Okay, so the second one. Uh-uh. Look at this. I'll show you. Where'd he go? Look at it. Look at it. B S R R. I did what I was told. Ah! Oh, shit. I 
<laughs> it's all good. I skipped Amazon? Hell no. Nah. A Potter Box punch bag. Uh, this is a that is not a stock. BSR BSSR is not even real. Alright, put your dukes up. I'll be in fucking Cali Womped or whatever the fuck. I don't know. But I'm gonna go ahead and finish this analysis. You broke cost basis on the way. I don't know, this kind of shit looks like it might be a good buy. It's a liquid as fuck. Uh but uh nineteen dollars if I was to trade this one, I'd be aiming for nineteen thirteen. And uh, basically $20, but this is a complete illiquid piece of shit. So, uh, all right. So, the next one that we got is Amazon. Ooh. Uh, big, big Casey. I'll, I don't know why, but that one's like, my eyes aren't registering that. Yes, I will look at that. Uh, let me write down this ticker because I'm, I'm starting to, starting to lose my, there's the rails here. I don't remember if that was BSSR or whatever. I don't really care. All right. Yes, we'll look at big. One second. All right, so for Amazon, right here. Uh, I'm just going to go over this one because the chart's literally right in front of you. Uh, everything that I need is right here. Uh, so here's here's what I'm looking at. Uh, you have a area of consolidation right here. This is going to be a big block. You've got a cost basis right here. Okay, just do whatever you want. Here. Okay, 120. Amazon, below this is no good, right? We don't want that. We, we, we don't want to see Amazon below this specific mark. I'm just putting out hard lines here. I'm going to put a second standard deviation here. We're going to clone that exact same mark. Oh, would you look at that? It almost seems as if this cost basis and my standard deviation channel linear regression is running into each other. So... That would make a confluence. That confluence would be my target if I was going short. Just throwing that out there. But you are at support. So let's go ahead and take what I've just drawn right here. And that's essentially what I would be projecting for you. Hold this box. Continue moving to the upside. Target 130, 132. Uh, Timestamp the noise he just made and add it to the soundboard. Son of a bitch. I hope Cave Bear ain't here. You know, I just want to let everybody know that I am not nearly this pale. Can I get some saturation, please? Oh, maybe I should put the saturation up a little bit. I was just looking at myself and I was like, wait, wait, hold on. That's not me. Okay. I'm going to do that. That's kind of terrifying. I look like I've got blood coming out of my eyes. All right, so Amazon looks good there. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and write that down. Good job, uh, Amazon. Now lower time frame. Potter is stuck under the chair. What? You wanna go outside and go potty? You guys wanna see my dog? It's fucking. She's gotten massive. I'm gonna show you my dog. Come here. Come here, big boy. Look at this damn dog. Giant. This was a small baby. I know. I know. No puppy grunt at me. Hmm? I think someone needs to go outside, Mom. Please tell me I haven't done Tesla yet. I have not, no. She's just a baby. Yeah, she's adorable. All right, let's take a look at B.I.G. I ain't dealing with all that. All right, so let's go to the daily. Really growing, dude. I mean, I feed her a lot of food. I mean, not like a lot of food. I feed her like really high quality food. So I'm hoping that helps, but. Uh, I already have analysis for this. Okay. 
you pay mom bills? Uh, I, I don't live with my mom, no. I, you know when you get older and you start calling your significant other mom for the person that you're referring to? Like, you'll be like, like, I'll be like, hey, mom, like, for my kids. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. You're, if you're old, you know what I'm talking about. No, mama. Dog mom. Well, real mom, too. She's not my mom, but she's my kid's mom, so. Sometimes she's my mom. Taking care of my laundry and shit. Okay, uh, so whether, whether we like it or not, um... Big did try to go up and reclaim the box and completely failed. Uh, I mean, completely. Hola, como estas? Uh, muy bien. Uh, Pequito Espanol. Real bad. Real bad. <laughs> uh, no, es yeah, uh, but just for reference. I am learning Spanish, but I'm not good at it. Uh, so BIG is did not hold on to that area of consolidation. So I'm going to step back out. We're going to go to the daily. I'm going to write this down because I keep fucking forgetting to write these tickers down. And I'm going to be 10 tickers deep. I'm going to be pissed. All right, big. So here's what I see. Uh, to be honest with you, you should not have broken back down below this mark. This was 774, and you're just barely hanging on. So as you can see, all the candles are closing at 750. So I'm going to go ahead and say this. Recover 766 or lose it, you're more than likely going to find yourself back down. Uh, and here's the deal. There is a, we're going to call it a punch back below 711. So if you punch down below 711, I'm going to be anticipating a move down to 621. So for BIG to recover, you would have to get basically 886. Uh, Lou Yu, yes, we are uh, uh, charting everything. Crypto Recon, that is the coolest fucking name I have ever seen in my life. That is, I play on words, that's amazing. You keep saying punchback, what is that? Okay, um, let's talk about that really quick. So again, we're going to be doing this all day. So there's not a, a problem with you guys, uh, nice. Um, with you guys asking me questions, I'm going to answer all of these questions. So this is a, you know, a big, we're working. Okay. So let me, uh, let me bring to your attention plug. So what is a punchback? Okay. We're going to really, really, really simplify this, but this is literally how I make a metric ass ton of the money that I make on a daily basis. This is how I do it. So the first thing is we need to find an area of consolidation. We need to find an area where sellers will not allow the price to go. And we also need to find an area where buyers will not allow the price to fall, right? In the middle of that, we're gonna have what's called a cost basis. Cost basis is a 50% mark, but cost basis also tells us, why is there two screens here? What the fuck is happening? Oh. Ain't nobody gonna say nothing? Okay, there we go. Okay, so, anyway. Um, here's what we're looking for, all right? It's really, really, really simple. And the reason that we do it is because it allows us to set entries, exits, and stop losses that typically allow us a low risk, high reward, right? Play works out, high reward, low risk, because if you get in at a specific mark, if you're good at getting in entries, then you're only looking, if it breaks back down below that, that's it, right? Because this is a mechanical feature within the market. It is not my fucking opinion. This is something that you can go back and categorically look for time and time again. This is a, literally, you could, it's a, a back testable. So, you have an area of consolidation. Buyers, sellers, you lose, right? Sellers come off of cost basis. Cost basis basically tells you whether sellers like the price or buyers like the price, right? It's a big auction hall. Whoever wins, if you win, you go up. 
If you lose, you go down, which is sellers winning. So you lose it. You drop to the support below you, right around seven, and really it doesn't even matter, and you bounce. When you bounce, you reclaim that 740. So the basically the same area that buyers were willing to support, again, think of it like this. There's a bunch of fucking robots right there, right? And the robots don't care which, which way price is heading. All they know is that they're buying when that mark is hit, right? And oftentimes you can gauge, you know, momentum and stuff like that, whatever. But that's what they do. They do that every single time the price gets there. So the same concept applies when you move to the upside, you are moving back into an area where buyers control the price. Therefore, they're going to send that up to cost basis. Cost basis is where we find out where buyers and sellers like the price. They like the price. So we know, we know, we know for a fact, right? That if you lose an area of consolidation and you reclaim it and you break cost basis, which is where buyers and sellers like the price, right? You will always go make a new high. You will always. Now, let me explain the story behind that because it's not so simple, right? You've got sellers, you've got buyers, right? Sellers want this price down here, right? They want to continue pushing this price lower, right? You have buyers. Clearly, we know what their job is. And we have cost basis, which is where those decisions are made, right? So at this point, if you're a seller, right, and you're pushing off of cost basis and then making that extra push to get it below support, you've done your job. The first part of your job is over, but the second part commences, right? The second part of your job is to continue pushing price down. You can't just stop right here because your positions are here, your positions are here, and your positions are here. Right, so think about it this way. Sellers are here, sellers are here, and sellers are here. You're right here. The stock does not continue to move any lower. Buyers at this area of consolidation, the same thing that we're doing here, refuse to let that price go any, uh, any further. So they buy it and they push it back into that area that sellers do not want that price to go. So what do sellers do when they are up against the wall? What do they do when they're about to lose money? They buy back, right? Sellers buy back the stock that they're borrowing. Hard to see where your mouse is pointing. Son of a bitch. So, uh, let me see if I can do this. Hold on. So, anyway, right? Your job was to hold this wall right there. You did not want that to go down, right? So once that is reclaimed, all of a sudden we have sellers exiting. Now you have the same thing happening here. Motherfucker, I can't, I can't draw a straight line to save my life. Right there, look at that line. Damn, that's cost basis, right? Cost basis. So now, because sellers used cost basis to push the stock down and you're back there, exactly. You got it. You got it. It is a squeeze. People think that squeezes happen on GameStop and no, they happen every single day, all the motherfucking time because as long as somebody is getting pushed out of their position, they're getting squeezed pretty passionate about this shit sorry but that is a punchback so it's not just my opinion it's not just an observation it is also just understanding how shit works inside of an area of consolidation right i love squeezing people too dude because guess what where are my entries where am i those of you in simple stacks you guys know the deal right your entry is here is it for sure no because as soon as you get done with that entry, you do have to deal with cost basis because a punchback is not a punchback until cost basis is broken, right? Cost basis must be broken and then you're guaranteed that next new high. If it is not, then you can expect a rejection and you could potentially see the stock move back down. But that's not what happens, right? We see momentum pick up immediately off of that floor, 
we see buyers push it right above this one, right? Oh, it started really good there. Then we see the break over that, and that's it. Those two marks are your entries. And guess what? Everybody else is buying here, or here, or here, or here. You're sitting back, and we're riding, right? Because while we were sitting in Tesla, what, were, was it, what was everybody else doing? Posting videos about their five minute trade that they took on Tesla. We caught all that shit. All that shit and more, so. Does that make sense? Can I get a thumbs up in the chat if all that yelling that I just did makes sense? Does that make sense to everybody? Right? We have an area, if not, I'll go through it again. We'll do it one more time and then we'll continue charting. Thumbs up, thumbs up. Let me get, sort of. Okay, Ben, ask questions, man. Let me know what 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 uh what can I elaborate on any further? You want me to go through it again? We'll do it one more time. It's not gonna hurt anybody. Okay, cool. Yeah, we'll do it again. You don't get how I draw my boxes. All right, we'll, we'll elaborate a little bit further there. Entry points. Got it. Okay, so let's, uh, let's do this. Let's try and make this bigger. You guys, can, can you see my cursor? I don't think you can. Give me one second. Ah, there we go. You can see my cursor now. All right, it's over with. All right, you guys ready? We're going to go ahead and go through this again. Another, you, you're talking about like a, a different example? All right, well, uh, the, I'm going to, I got I to go with what's off the top of my head. So we'll go with Tesla. Okay. All right, everybody ready? Thumbs up. We, we're ready. We're going to go ahead and do this again. All right, we're going to do this again. I'm going to walk you down exactly how I set up a Potter box and then. Sorry, I thought I was going to have to take action. Doggy's being a uh, dog still learning not to use her teeth and she's got some sharp fucking teeth. She cut my cut my finger open. Shit fucking hurt. <laughs> All right, let's do it. So our first job with the Potter Box, if you want to screen record this, screen record it. I don't give a shit. Just make sure that you get it down. Write it down. We're going to, it, it works on every time frame, okay? Get rid of the sentiment chart. I, I'm not going to do that. No. Uh, I'll go, oh, what? Ah! I'm just drawing funny lines all over my chart. Um, can it please stop? Thank you. I don't want to do this anymore. We'll move it up. That's not really affecting anything, though. Uh, do you have better accuracy with large caps or small caps? It doesn't matter. It's all mechanical, man. It's all mechanical. It has nothing to do with the news. It has nothing to do with anything. It's just a mechanical cost basis break. It, it, it's a... Uh, yeah, it's kind of hard to explain without sounding like I got a, a tinfoil hat. I, I don't believe in anything other than just these costs. Basically, I am a cost basis. So, the first part of beating or uh, building a Potter box is establishing an area of consolidation where buyers will not allow the price to go, right? And sellers will not allow the price to go higher. Here are sellers, okay? I'm going to highlight them right here. These are sellers. Okay, they are in charge of making sure that you don't go higher. Okay, these are buyers. Pretty obvious, guys. Buyers, make sure the price does not fall below that mark. Okay, so pretty simple. We got that part. That's it. That's it. You just have to find support and you have to find... Guys, uh, how far back to, uh, if you're on a higher time frame, you should be starting with the daily to see exactly where you're at, okay? So if you're on the weekly 
and you're inside of a weekly range, you should probably use that weekly range from two years ago to get an idea of where the top end or biggest support or biggest resistance are. This is the hourly time frame. This strategy works on every time frame, daily, weekly. This worked on Tesla's daily while also using the one hour. So I'm explaining how to make a Potter box right now. Okay, so and pay attention. Here it is. Sellers, an area of consolidation. We're going sideways. There is no new high. There is no new low, right? So we got that down. Secondly, we're finding our buyers. One, two, three. We can see that buyers, look, yes, there is a wick. We do not count the wicks. We do sometimes, but not right here. The reason that we're not counting these is because we want to know where price was ultimately controlled. Also, for those of you who are asking left, how far left do we go? You can go all the way left. You could go left as you want. Look, support is support is support is support. That's 159. You hold it there. But looking at this in most recent price action, uh, mention three taping, three tapping. I will get to that part. I will get to that part. I'm trying to, I'm trying to break down the basics of a Potter box. The Potter box is simply an area where buyers and sellers control the price and do not allow it to go. Therefore, you go sideways. Now, within the Potter box, you're going to have cost basis. Now, this is typically around 50%. If a stock has been sitting in range for longer than a month, then that can go further. Yep. Yes, absolutely. Uh, I can't say your name, but Huff Official. Yes, you're right. So typically you will see things like this, right? Cost basis basically tells you that if you drop below, you will go to support. If you cross above, you will go to resistance, okay? This is the tug of war line in between the two where decisions are made, okay? Is everybody, does that make sense, right? So we have our sellers, we have our buyers, and we have our cost basis, which tells us which one we're going to hit, right? Now, within an area of consolidation, typically, you're not going to stay in there longer than three taps on either side. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three, right? You end up punching back into it, and we find ourselves in here again but that's when we start to actually see that break. So let us move back again. So does, does everybody understand that simple concept behind the Potter box? Buyers and sellers sideways. Do we got it? Thumbs up in the chat, middle finger in the chat, tomatoes, if you're an OG. Ben, does that make sense? You got that right there? HHGW, if I say your name, it's gonna sound like I'm having a stroke. <laughs> yeah. Yes, this works on every single time frame. Okay. Cool. Everybody getting it? Everybody got it? All right. If you do not understand Nicole uh, or Nicole A., um, listen, stop right there. I'm going to tell you something. Hopefully this changes the directions on things. Stop wishing. Wishing will never get you anything, dude. Uh, lady, whoever you are. Uh, listen, you can. Everybody in here can. There, You are no different. It, don't wish, just do. Just start experimenting. Start watching. Start listening. Eventually, it will start to make sense. So, no wishing. That is, that is not the right way to go about this. Um... Cool, 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 got it. So, listen, right now, if you don't understand this simple part of the process, no judgment, let me know right now, or DM me on the Discord or something of that nature. Okay, so, now, what is a punchback, okay? So we have our Potter box. Isn't that a punchback before the first box? Yes, yes. Yes, 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 you are absolutely motherfucking right. Good eyes. So yes, there is an area of consolidation. There is support. There is cost basis. And there is resistance, right? You make a 
low outside of that box, you reclaim that box, you break cost basis, and you go make a new high, right? And typically we can find that new high by just simply locating the next cost basis in an area of consolidation that before. Boom, right? So your target would have been the top, right? You end up consolidating in this area and you break out. So where is the punchback? I'll click if you watch him enough, he goes over it a lot. Yes, uh, after I get done with this example, we're gonna go back to charting for a little bit and then we'll go, I'm sure I'll end up uh, not really, you, no, it's not a pivot point strategy at all, because again, this is, this is based off market mechanics, not developing pivots, uh, which pivots and, um, yes, pivots and, uh, uh, cost bases can align themselves, but I found that the fibs actually do that better rather than pivots, but pivots can be off of fibs, so, yeah, there's a lot. Uh, anyway, uh, so here's the punchback. So here is how I, and again, I just made a whole video on this. We, we went over it a bajillion times. This is how I nabbed that giant play, guys, on Tesla. This is Trend Spider. So everybody ready? Thumbs up again. We good? We're going into the next part. So we know how to build a Potter box, right? So we're going to do the same thing right here, okay? Not a problem, Ben. I hope, hopefully that helped, my guy. Uh, so we're going to build another Potter box right here. Okay. Now the punchback is with, is a strategy within the Potter box that I can't live without, right? It wouldn't, it is literally how I trade on the one minute, the five minute, the one, the daily doesn't really matter. This is how I execute these trades. So we develop yet again, another area of consolidation after making a new high. Awesome. But the punchback is true. So we see a punch back here. So we made a new high, right? Then we sank back down into the box, right? So from here, we're basically looking at cost basis. Cost basis holds, okay. At, then we know that Tesla can stay up, but it doesn't. It opens a candle underneath that 170 mark and you go make a new low, right? So in the hourly, you're gonna go make a low, a new low outside of the area of consolidation that you've been holding. So one, two, three, you break back in, you will go past that. That's basically what, and, and our job is to find where is that, right? Where is that target? And that's what we've been doing on Tesla, right? So to the upside. So the same thing here, we end up losing that floor, we bounce off of this large box underneath us, showing that buyers are unwilling to let that price fall. So that's good. We know that that's, that's, a, that's a start. That's where we wanna see the, the um, we do not wanna drop down twice, right? We do not wanna drop here, hit that cost basis and break, and then do it again, because that ultimately would lead Tesla all the way down to the floor. We don't wanna see that. So here's, here's where the, the punchback comes in. If you, lose an area of consolidation and then you reclaim it oops then you reclaim it like you did here this is reclaiming you bounce you build the stock is no longer allowed to fall below 166.75 again and that is where you can start taking positions if you wish second is cost basis cost basis is a guaranteed new high you break cost basis you're not going here you're going to make a new high now if you think about the mechanism that's firing off here right you have all of this compression right all of this back and forth eventually somebody's going to lose and that is going to be that's going to be a bigger run right the longer you go sideways the better because that builds up more tension more pop more money etc etc so that is it that is it. Now I step out to the daily because I can't just simply be trading on the, on the fucking, the hourly, right? Now we step out here and guess what? It's a fractalized strategy. It works on every single time frame, right? Check it out. You lose your box. You reclaim it, right? You break up, you build, you break cost basis, which is, uh, Am I, yes, I am recording all of this. This is all being recorded.
What's going on, Bayless? Hope you're having a good weekend, my guy. Happy belated Father's Day. Hell nah. No telegram. No telegram. Nah, we don't do telegram. We, get, we do Discord. All, a ton of free education in the Discord. So, okay. Everybody good, right? Yes, I'm on YouTube. Everybody good. Everybody got so what, I, what I've been laying down so far. I will answer that question because it is incredibly important that you know how to do that, or that this is this this is a requirement. If you have trading view, you must have Arca in and NYSE data, and you have to chart on the 24 hour time frame. Okay, it will not work if you don't do it. My strategy: you actually have to like adjust your charts to see everything. And that's where I think that people fuck up. I think that people, I really do believe that there is a different, that the market looks different to those who are looking at the entirety of the volume and all of the after hours, it looks totally different. My charts don't compare to other people's because they can't see what I see. So anyway, you have to have those requirements. So anyway, moving on. Guys, this is a daily punchback. We just established how this went down on the hourly, right? So now, if you were to start on the daily, you could still trade it and then move down to the lower time frame and execute it fucking perfectly. It's absolutely maddening. I wish I could just shove this in everybody's brains and, and they just get it, but it takes some time. So the same thing happens on the daily. You've got an area of consolidation. You lose it. You reclaim it. You break cost bases and look how, that's, look how the price holds. Look how the price holds. On top of cost basis, cost basis, right? Cost basis. I just turned to Aussie there. So we're sitting on top of cost basis. Buyers love the price, right? Because you break cost basis, you will go make a new high. Go look. That new high is not, that's, that's, that's past 217, right? So the new high that we were looking for was right here. Basically just 218, 220. That was the first target, right? 205 was the first target, but 230 was the first, or, or 220 was the first target because what we wanted is we wanted to break this cost basis, right? Which gives us yet another new high, and then this cost basis. That was a three cost basis break, y'all, which is why we saw that. That's why, I mean, that is literally the squeeze type shit yes usa one aao yes when you break cost cost basis to the downside you will go make a new low and in fact you'll notice that any time that you're about to go down like go to a infamous like nicola right go to a nicola check this out with me i'll show you guys how my strategy works uh, everywhere right and 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 you'll actually notice that it doesn't really matter what it is, but if they're going to sink it down lower, a lot of the times they're going to run it up higher. So, for example, let's just go take a look at this. Do you see right here? We'll just, we'll just, I'm not going to fucking try and be a genius here. So, look, you run past your resistance, shorts get a really nice average, and then you punch down through that box, right? So, the box is actually... right here so right there same thing you leave and this is the daily I, I could show you a thousand more examples right here same thing look box low Motherfucker. There you go. Right there. Punch back. New low. Yes. Absolutely. Absol absol absolutely. Cost basis is typically around the 50% mark. Bro. Jacoby, your motherfucking uh, p profile picture is damn near traumatizing. That's crazy. Uh, I, I cannot chart crypto, guys. I can't chart crypto on this. And I also do not. I do not include myself on any sort of crypto charts. I don't advise in crypto. I just pretend like I, it doesn't exist. 
I, I'm be I'm gonna be dead ass honest with you. I I have made a firm promise to myself to never do that shit again. That was a perfect explanation. Much appreciated. Awesome. So. So, just to really quick recap, okay. So when I took this play on May 18th, okay, May 18th is right here, folks. Right? Look. This itty bitty candle. May 18th, okay? I took Tesla off of a lower time frame cost basis break, which told me that we were going to make a lower time frame new high. That lower time frame new high was my higher time frame cost basis. So I assumed that if I took the position then using my box, right, the top of my box that I got in at, so I get in at cost basis, when we break resistance, that's my new stop. So no ma nah. No. So if you if you if you do uh supply and demand zone to zone, it, it will not work out that way. So how to set a stop loss? For sure. Yeah, let's go look at that. So obviously time frame, contract expiration, all of that very much matters. You have to have this. But let's go uh Let me go find a good example here. Let me find something fresh so that, you know, we're not fucking using a cheap example here. Okay, here you go. So, um, let's say you are waking up, brand new day. Uh, looks like June 6th. Yep, right there, 7, 8, 9. Market opens, you hit your floor. Okay, so you don't even get a punch back, right? But you do actually hit your support. So a lot of the times we like to buy off of the bottom of a box, especially in a solid uptrend. The tip of my nose itches, folks. Don't judge me. Uh, uh, so cost basis is at 216.80, 217 basically. I can enter at that mark, right? And typically what I want to do is I want to do this. And this is why I focus so much on candle closes. So right here, you'll notice that candle close, candle wick, candle close, candle close, candle close, everything stays there, right? Here, you'll notice that sellers kind of push off. They try and hold on top. But otherwise, that 216 even level, uh, judging, uh, that 216 level is solid, right? When we find candle control, right? 216. That's my first entry. So if I was looking to get in, my entry is here, right? And I'm gonna be honest with you. My entry is my exit. So when I get in, yeah, maybe I go and I drop the wicks down here to see exactly where do those, where does it bounce? Um, but that's my entry right there. Fire one. Now here's, here's another entry. Ready? Fire two. Your entries are your exits, guys. It's just that simple. You just, if, if the candle, if you pop up above your mark and, and then this candle flushes and closes a candle down underneath that 215, obviously contract selection matters, but this is it. So you have two entries right here. You have the block. You can use the bottom or the top of the block and you can enter on both of those because candles close there I know that if a candle closes underneath it because there is control there, that is it under control, that it's going to get pulled back down. It doesn't, right? So I can enter right here and set my stop loss at that mark. Now take a look. Do you see how this candle comes, comes hurtling back down? Doesn't even fucking scratch the surface, barely. Tap, reversal, right back out. So I'm using the in any time you see structure, that is a stop loss. Right? As long as you're in the right direction. Yo, why is my nose itching so bad? Coffee break, guys. Hold on. I've been talking for like 900 minutes. So, is everything I made talked about so far? Does anybody have any questions on that? Otherwise, we might get back to a little bit of charting here. So, if you guys have any chart requests. Hopefully, you guys are drinking your coffee, enjoying your morning. So when that candle pulled down, you stopped out. So again, 
Uh, wait, when what candle? No, 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 no. So when this candle gets pulled back down, if the price loses 217, that's it. The choice capital. Who the fuck are you talking about? Listen, I, I, you know what I love, dude? I actually, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I am so thirsty for haters right now. I want someone to come and talk shit in my stream right now. I had a daydream. I had a damn near like daydream about it this morning. I, I, I want someone to come in and talk shit today. Not because I'm going to snap on them, because if if anybody was to ever fucking try and question this shit, I mean, you, you can't fucking argue with market mechanics. You can't, there's, there's literally, there's no fucking arguments. It is, it is literally a repeatable fucking strategy that you can play. Fuck ICT. So, excuse my language, sorry. <laughs> Fuck all that shit. I am not going to make you guys listen to a 10-hour lecture on my fucking wife so that you can trade. It's so stupid. All right. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I work for Samantha Deluck. I'm watching you. Why would you get haters? I'm gonna be honest with you. What the fuck is that even? I don't think that's the website I was looking for. Yeah, maybe that's not it. No, no, no. I <laughs> Um <laughs> No, I mean the thing is is like I really I get excited about charting. I get excited about trading because I I have a, tr a strategy that I trust, that I've built, that I can teach people, that I can repeat time and time again. I, you don't hear no cracks in my motherfucking voice. I know what I'm talking about. So this dude has helped me make several thousand dollars over the last... Yeah, dude, Rogi, you've been crushing it, man. Crushing it. I love that. All right. Uh, so let's go ahead and... Um, so what is your preferred entry? Cost basis or at the edge of the box? Uh, depends on how I, 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 it's case by case case. <laughs> um, it's case by case, right? So the way that I see it, right, is if we are moving in a strong uptrend, I'm willing on a punch back, I'm willing to get in, right? So we'll, we'll just for all types of purpose, we'll just go back over here, right? So I'm willing to get in here. Do you, the reason why that I am willing to get in. Okay, so this is a really, 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 really simple concept. Okay, uh, do you have TikToks on the Potter Box or not? I literally just posted one yesterday. It's actually like a full rundown on the Tesla chart, and I have YouTube's as well. So, uh, all right, check it out, guys. Listen, right here, I'm getting in right here because once you reclaim a floor, the only rejection. Uh, Jim, you can't see Jim. He's here. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Ugh. I'm going to get kicked off this app. It's like constantly I have like these... Um, I'm fighting this other version of myself that wants to get banned. Um, so I know that the rejection is going to come off of cost basis because cost basis is where buyers and sellers decide whether they like the price. So right at that 99.65, the rejection would happen here and my stop loss is there. So it gives me plenty of room, plenty of room. So, um,
John, Jim Cena, you can't see him. That's right, bro. That's right. All right, let's do some stocks, guys. We'll take a quick break. Hopefully, um, hopefully.